Welcome back to this mini video series where I build a couple of financial spreadsheets that hopefully will enable you to understand your, the prospects of your investments or your role finances a little better. Um, if you haven't watched the first one, uh, please start from the beginning where I start with a completely blank spreadsheet and build up to a mini model um, of someone investing in equities and, and what they can expect to earn from their investments over a, a lifetime of savings. The model is easy to adapt to your specific circumstances. In this video, I'll be adding the minimal risk asset. If you don't know what that is, I've made a couple of videos that outline it. Please go check those out. Uh, it depends on your current or your time horizon. Um, but uh, it's important because most people shouldn't just buy equities. And in any case, it's not a difficult change to make. Again, the advantage of these uh, spreadsheets is that unlike an expensive software package here, by building the spreadsheet yourself or building them alongside me, you'll hopefully understand how the numbers fit together better and how you can easily tailor the inputs or, or the model itself to your specific circumstances. My name is Lars Croyer. I'm a former hedge fund manager who has written a couple of books about finance, and I'm not doing these videos as a hobby. I should say I'm not a financial planner. So before you do anything I say in this or any other videos, uh, do your own work, take your own advice. Um, but in any case, let's get uh, right into the spreadsheets. Okay, so here we're back at the original uh, spreadsheet from the last video. Uh, I haven't really touched it other than uh, I gave it a name, as you can see up here, personal financial model. You can obviously name it anything you want. Um, and now we want to add the minimal risk asset. So uh, I think the easiest, which, easiest way to do this is actually to... Um, create a whole new sheet, so mainly so we keep the old sheet. So perhaps we call this sheet um, equities only, only. Um, and then let's copy the sheet, right? So we move copy, it says create a copy. Um, so here we have the exact same sheet, um, just a copy of it. You can see equities only number two. Um, let's add the call this with um, min risk asset. Um, now uh, again, check out if you don't know uh, if this is all new to you. Check out the former video on how I get to, to this point. Um, uh, so again, in this video, we're introducing the minimal risk asset. Um, it's obviously a hugely important point um, what the minimal risk asset is. Um, in this case, I'm going to uh, assume that it's a highly rated government bond. I made a video about why those are, uh, for most people, the best um, minimal risk assets uh, that you can get your hands on. Go check out those videos. Um, and, and it's important because in reality, most people shouldn't just own equities. They're far too risky. Um, but let's uh, let, let's get right into it. So this was uh, in the past. We didn't have to say this, but the the assumption from before was that this was equities. Um, now let's add the minimal risk asset. So do that here. Um, min risk. Um, and then again, uh, yeah, again check out why. Um, let's make a couple of decimals. Um, on all of them, oops. Um, in the minimal risk asset, you can reasonably assume to get a return of half a percent a year. There's some volatility in, in that that changes from year to year, but um, uh, that's not a bad, a bad number. And it obviously depends on the timing of your, uh, the duration of your investment, so how long you're going to keep it for, um, and so forth. We've still not added risk. Uh, which we'll do later, and it's obviously an, a hugely important point. But uh, let's uh, then uh, what we do here is this is just my way of working, but you see an allocation. Um, so let's again call it min risk, and I actually find it easier to copy over the cells and then over typing over them than doing it from scratch. Um, Let's for now make it zero uh, percent, um, and that should be blue. Why my blue went away? Um, so um, and then equities will therefore <clears throat> be be the rest, uh, hundred percent minus 
that, so that should be 100%, which it is, which is good. Um, let's just add a decimal to these two guys. Um, and this one should now be black, right? Because it's it's an input cell. Um, oh, sorry, it's not an input cell, it's a calculated cell. We copy this down. Um, and again, just so it's easier to make it all, I'm gonna make this one an input cell. We'll later change it, so, um, oops, copied that the wrong way. Uh, copy it down. So now you see uh, we have added the allocation <clears throat> in percentage terms. Uh, let's neatly copy that across. There you go, allocation. Um, but obviously we want to do this in amounts also. So, so let's call this one allocation amounts. Um, and what this is is no longer a percentage. Um, and it is then, uh, let me go up so you can see the whole sheet. Um, it is basically a simple calculation where at the beginning of the year, we have 4,000 in this case, we allocated zero to the minimal risk asset. So that's obviously zero. Um, and then to equities, we take the same start of the year allocation and we allocate it, uh, in this case, 100% to equities. And we copy this formula down, boom, and then you have it. And just to be clear, at this point, um, you want to then calculate what was the investment return. So the investment return has obviously changed because, well, it hasn't in this specific case because we're all in equities, but um, we are now saying uh, we should no longer do E17 because that's the start of the year. In fact, our allocation amount is now these two guys, the N and O column. So we instead, let's just delete that for now. So we start afresh. So this is then um, the amount we have in uh, minimal risk asset times the, again, inflation adjusted uh, return of the minimal risk asset plus the amount we have in equity times what we expect to get from equities. And again, you're gonna have to go up and make these two a constant, that the dollar sign, that's how you make the seven a constant in Excel. Oops, so I just pushed enter, so we click there. Boom, so now that's a constant and we copy that formula down. And again, you'll notice, we just changed the investment return to include an allocation to minimal risk asset, but we haven't actually allocated anything to minimal risk asset. Let's make this a 50% allocation right now. Boom, you see how it all changed dramatically. Um, we have now allocated an equal amount in every year to the minimal risk asset and equities. You can see these two numbers are the same, which means the formula works. And that means our investment return has changed. Um, it's obviously the expected investment return because there is risk uh, particularly in the equity numbers um, but uh, but we we have uh, now asset, added this asset class um, and taken a lot less risk in the portfolio by adding 50 percent to the minimal risk asset we can obviously make this hundred percent and now we have no equities you'll notice the investment return is really really small and at the end of the period you'll notice because we're only now assuming 0.5% return a year. So the total contribution is actually very similar to the total amount we end up with in retirement at 67. All the other things in the, the spreadsheet is, um, is the same, um, but uh, as, again, it's a good test just to check that you've done it right when you could then go and say, well, with the assumptions you had from the last spreadsheet, we were expected to end up uh, coming back to my millionaire um, the, the, the guy who asked me a question about how to become a millionaire um, you know, in this scenario where we had 3% growth and contribution, 4,000 annual contribution and starting with zero, we invested in all the equities, which you can see out here. Um, we ended up with a million um, and uh, uh, 92,000. If we go down to the equities only sheet, it's the same number, right? So that suggests that we haven't actually managed to screw anything up yet. Um, in, uh, so this is now we've added the minimal risk asset to our um, uh, to our portfolio. Uh, let's go in and change it again to a 50/50 allocation, um, and uh, yeah, uh, and and that's sort of it. In a later video, um, I'll introduce um, the risk 
of particularly equities. I'll make the somewhat gross assumption there's no risk in the minimal risk asset. I'll explain why. Um, and also uh, what we can do here is have, these are a formula, but we can clearly you know, change all these numbers uh, if we want it. So if we say starting at the age of 27, we want only 40% minimal risk asset or 60% minimal risk asset, uh, we can do that, and I'll, I'll walk through uh, sort of how we can easily do that. This is actually, incidentally, a good way to figure out, uh, to see why you should mark the input numbers. If I go away from this, you're like, oh, where was it I put 60? And you'd have to go in and look at it. Instead, if I made this blue, it's much easier to see. Actually, it's not that easy to see. But, but anyhow, now when I scroll away from it, you can see, oh, there's something funny about this cell K21, uh, uh, um, but let's ignore that, so we copy that up. Um, uh, so this is it, um, and, and, uh, and, and we'll continue again uh, with adding risk and, um, and uh, stages of life uh, in a later video. And please do comment if there are other things that you want me to add. So thanks for watching. I hope that was interesting and useful. In the next video, we'll be adding a risk to this financial model, as obviously while we can expect a certain outcome from equities and the minimal risk asset is by no means certain. So we want to understand that uh, risk or volatility. Um, it, you can subscribe to my channel if you want to be uh, kept abreast of when future videos come out, including more in this series. Um, and you can share the video on social media if you think your friends would benefit from watching them. But in any case, I hope to see you in the next video.